Welcome to the last episode of our Trash Mob series, everyone. This will be the last episode this month, and then we'll have a full two-week break before we have another series for you, because January has five Mondays. <laughs> what? Does it feel like that's happening a lot lately? Does it feel like we have a lot? Maybe because we have to pay attention to how many Mondays there are, but I feel I, I, like there's been a lot of five Monday months. Yeah, there's there's about three or four a year. No, oh, I guess. It just seems like a lot, doesn't it? I don't it know. really does. <laughs> Before we dive into the episode, though, announcements. Announcements. Yeah, first up, uh, we wanted to send a very heartfelt congratulations to James and Mel D'Amato on the birth of their new baby, Project Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> they are super adorable, uh, and we couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, and, and that's another podcast baby to add to the network. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a few already. Um and we know James and Mel are going to be fantastic parents uh, with a lot of love to give this little one. So uh, congratulations, James and Mel. Absolutely. I saw Mel posted some pictures of Project Falcon and recently. And I forget every time how tiny newborns are. It's like, so many. My last newborn baby is turning nine next week. So yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm fairly far removed from that process. Uh-huh. But like they're so small. They they're start so, so small. small. I know. Like, how, <laughs> and then, how, how did we exist? <laughs> how, did, how, how did they do that? Nate asked yesterday something about babies. And I was like, dude, babies can't even hold their own heads up. And he's like, wow, babies are idiots. I was like, no, they're just babies. <laughs> just human babies. <laughs> they're just really small, tiny people with very large heads. Yeah, it's, it's you know, to hold our brains. Right, right. Yeah. If um, our brains were somewhere else, we would be able to hold our heads up. At exactly. Birth, so. Exactly. So I had to explain all this to him. But like, yeah. I just like looking at those pictures, it was like, holy cow, mine used to be like that. Like, yeah. oh, they're so small. They're so small. They're so small. Anyway, mm-hmm. congratulations on Project Falcon. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if you want to help out James and Mel's new family as well as all of the shows on the network, please consider giving to the One Shot Network Patreon. To get access to the secret archive, along with lots of other benefits, um, mm-hmm. I know we we never talk about really anything above that, but there is like a book club where you can get a new RPG every month. Yeah. Um, there's a couple different tiers, um, but the five dollar and up level, you get access to the secret archive, where shows across the network contribute bonus content for you to enjoy. Um, the Patreon is where James gets his income. It also pays for uh, shows on the network um, mm-hmm. for our hosting fees, our art, and in some cases, new equipment when your microphone gives out after four years. So exactly. thanks, patrons. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are hoping to bring you some more bonus episodes pretty soon as we are able to and not have migraines on Sundays when we plan on recording because mm-hmm. um, that seems to keep happening to us. <laughs> but exactly. we're excited to bring you more soon. So if you would like to help out James and Mel or help out shows on the network generally, please consider becoming a patron. Absolutely. Um, And I think that's it for today's announcements. Uh, We have a fantastic discussion episode ready for you all. Uh, So we'll see you back here afterwards for the call to action. our discussion episode. Last time, we finished our session zero for Trash Mob. This episode, we are discussing the character creation process. We are very excited to welcome back Melody from Mother Multiverse Media. Do you want to reintroduce yourself to everyone and also tell us about the character you made in our last episode? Sure. So I'm Melody Wheeler of Mother Multiverse Media. Uh, You can find my games on Itch. And if you want to, you know, bother me, you can also find me on Twitter. Um, So the character I made. So uh, for our little isekai game in like snowy barren wastes, 
where originally we were all on a plane that crashed mm-hmm. together. Uh, my name before was Honey Barrington. Uh, she was a bodyguard for uh, one of our other characters who will probably talk about themselves in a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. So her occupation's a bodyguard. Um, and when she awoken in this snowy waste in the, uh, the what was it, the Cavern of Carved Idols, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. It turned out that she was a rodent vermin, in particular a bunny. It was that way the whole time. And <laughs> um, her skills after leveling all the way to, I believe we got to 14 and then we got an evolution. So technically by the end, they are a lower level than they got to, but mm-hmm. stronger. So she's level nine. Uh, and let's see her, her long list of skills has a uh, sneak at a 10, improved disease attack five, improved speed six, improved muscle 10, resist disease five, humanoid four, uh, natural armor five, resist bashing four, resist devour four, resist poison four, horn tactics at a seven, magic boost at a four, and area disease. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that was just a, is a, is a long list of things. And uh, by the end of her uh, bunny monster and snowy waste uh, kind of <laughs> career, she is now a, a person shape. Still got her bunny ears. She got red eyes. And she has a, a kind of bone armor that she can, like, grow around her body to uh, protect mm. her from attacks. And she got a name at the end, and we didn't decide on names right away. But I, what I would hope would happen, this is what I, this is what I wanted. It I have to have consent because it would involve somebody else's character. Is mm. when, when you finally got the magic word skill that lets you name people. There yeah. was just a moment of, so how does this work? If I just call her Snowball, does that work? And then just Snowball, name accepted. No. <laughs> 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 so her name is Snowball. I love it. <laughs> That's precious. I love it. It's adorable. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Ryan, tell us about your character that uh, inflicted this horror <laughs> on poor I, Snowball. <laughs> I, I I forgot that there's the the video game prompt type things, and that is so good. Um. So, yeah, I made uh, originally in my my past life, um, I I created uh, Felicia Starfire, a professional singer, um, uh, very famous and was going to this anime convention um, or or whatever type of convention, um, cosplaying uh, incognito, basically, leaving clues for uh, her fans and whatnot. Got reincarnated as a snow goose. Uh, yeah. because what's more terrifying than a, than a goose that can blend in with the snow? Um, <laughs> can't even see it coming. You can't even see it coming. Um, <laughs> who eventually, uh, leveled into a class of sorcerer, uh, became able to speak and read any language. Uh, uh she kind of, uh, evolved into the face of the party, um, with, uh, improved charm skill of 10. Um, and getting close to improving uh, her scavenger and grazer and metabolize skills, uh, also at level 10 right now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, she was able to get improved magic word at six, uh, which is uh, level 16 effectively. And I was able to name everybody here, uh, including myself, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So I, I gave myself um, the name of... Uh, Anka Starfire, uh, because Anka is uh, the Latin word for gander. Um, and uh, Starfire is my, my last name from my previous life. So and it's and it sounds really cool together, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ultimately, she wants to she wants to throw fireballs from her mouth. And what's what's more cool than that? It's what every goose secretly wants. I know. <laughs> we know it. <laughs> Uh, Amelia, how about your character? Uh, my character started out as Lydia Frost, headed to this convention uh, as World Yu-Gi-Oh! Champion um, for the competition <laughs> before the plane crashed. Yep. Um, 
uh, woke up as a snake, mm. um, a, an incredibly deadly snake. I have, uh, I just took all the attacks, honestly. <laughs> I have um, improved poison attack, acid attack, disease attack. And also later on, um, what you want in every snake, a little bit of a necromancer. A little bit of a um, necromancer, yep. Yeah, so I can also summon haunted items, um, <laughs> which I would like eventually to be um, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I would like to be able to like find a deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards somewhere and mm. just like summon the things that are on the cards. Or make, really, make your really own, cool right? That. Yeah. Um, and then I, uh, my name ended up being Aeon. Um, because it's just a really cool snake name. Yeah. Um, when we took our sort of like humanoid evolved forms, I'd like to think of this character as starting to resemble um, the the Naga that you see on the old school L5R cards. Um, I'm not going to go all the way to teleporting sexy lady snake because <laughs> I think that is a bridge too far. But like we're headed in that direction. And I just want everybody to have that visual. That's a, that's um, a goal. That's a goal. The goal is to eventually become a teleporting sexy lady snake. Yep. Um, like in the collectible card game, Legend of the Five Rings. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, which my character is probably also good at. You got to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe I we... should have been the world L5R champion, yeah. but it's not really, they're, they're not really doing tournaments anymore. So. No. Mm. Yu-Gi-Oh is way cooler. Yu-Gi-Oh is, is close. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, and I forgot to mention that my humanoid form is uh, pic- picture like, you know, Classical, but not like too classical angel of uh, humanoid wings on the back, uh, beautiful white wings on the back. And then uh, to replace the head with a, with like a anthropomorphized goose head. Uh, and as I said before, there's not nothing terrifying. angelical about that. <laughs> no, I could just imagine the silhouette like from behind of like this like beautiful wing spreading wings out. And, the and, snack, then, and then it turns to the side and is just like. Honk. Honk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dulcet tones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, amazing. Of an angry goose. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go ahead and dive uh, right into a segment that we are calling D20 for your thought. D20 for your thoughts. So in the segment, we talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how it relates to system, other games. But first, our cliche question. How did mm-hmm. you get here? How did you start oh. playing role playing games? How did you start designing games? Um, how I got into role playing games. So, like when I was young, you know, I'd play video games, and I remember seeing stuff in the background and not having the ability to grab it with the character, and that driving me up a wall. Like, mm. but it's an axe; it's right there. I should just be able to take it. Why can't <laughs> I do that? There is so um, much stuff in games that you can't interact with and it's maddening right and so you know flash forward quite a bit when i discovered role-playing games were a thing i started with card games and there was a card game called uh rage that was based on werewolf the apocalypse and mm. so somebody else was talking about werewolf the apocalypse but i realized the terms from the card game and i was like Oh, I know what you're talking about. And we chatted a little and I didn't actually, but I kind of did. And so (laughs) it was one of those suddenly like they tell me about the game and I'm just like, this is what I want. This is what I've wanted in the game for a while. I remember having no idea what it is like. Is it going to have egg timers? Do you have to measure the real world? Is there science? Is there advanced math? And I was like, oh, this is way easier than I thought when I actually saw it. (laughs) Um, This is great. That's incredible. (laughs) Yeah, like I was just like, how is this work? And I was like, oh, this is way simpler than I ever would have imagined. So I started mm-hmm. with a lot of White Wolf games and, uh, you know, obviously stuck with them until now. As far as designing stuff, um, you know, obviously I homebrewed a little and played around with systems and things for years. I played lots of different games. And uh, at some point I came across this idea of doing um, a game about a meta game. Um, mm. there was a book I wrote called Vector Attack of the Meta Pirates, and uh, is basically about a like multi a meta dimensional pirate who is an NPC in a role playing game who is self aware that they are an mm. NPC in a role playing game, and them traveling literally between settings and games 
to interact with people because that's the only time they're real. Oh. Is when people are thinking of them. And so it became a really, it's it's a really weird campaign. Uh, I, mm. I wasn't able to get people to really sign on with it, but it had so much design stuff in it that I learned a lot just making that game. Mm -hmm. And uh, then COVID came, and uh, at some point there, uh, I hit the, <laughs> I'm going to make things again. And then I made <laughs> a lot of things for a little bit. And then I went back to work, and I made almost nothing but Trash Mob over that time, and here we are. Wonderful. So what do you look for in a system as far as character creation? Like what, what pieces need to be there for great character creation to happen? So I, I had I had a kind of theory about like when it comes to games, uh, how do you put yourself into the game? How do you interact? What is your way of um, personalizing it? Because if you have a video game like a platformer, right? Nobody looks mm -hmm. at the screen and goes, oh, wow, Mario is doing so well. Like, nobody does that. It's, oh, that person is doing well. And that's because their input is going into the controller. And that's how you put you into the game is you have mm -hmm. control on that. In a role-playing game, though, like, you roll a dice. You have no control over what the dice does. You can mm -hmm. make decisions and that makes you do things. But you have no control over the dice itself. And so in a lot of ways, having the ability to customize and choose what you can do, those are your two big inputs. So when it comes to an RPG, what I look for is the ability to put your own imprint on it and mm. do things kind of your own way uh, to make it feel like it's something that is yours and not just like you being forced to play basically somebody else's character, if that makes any kind of sense. That makes a lot of yeah. sense, yeah. Absolutely. So that's that's kind of what I look for is, does this give me the ability to put me into this? Which, you know, I've I've played some games where it's like, OK, like I don't always feel that as much. And if that's the case, it needs to be evocative in a way that lets me still get into it, I guess. Mm. Like, so that's interesting, considering that you started with like kind of White Wolf games mm -hmm. and stuff. And a lot of those do have like a sort of established kind of setting that you are you're working with some of them have kind of like a meta plot happening oh, depending yeah. on the game and so it's like is is some of that desire like from playing those games and wanting more out of that or just like well is like a personal preference that you found over time it, it was more just like the revelation of like okay where do we where do we get ourselves into it how does it become mm something that is ours and how do we get the mm -hmm. enjoyment out of that and i'm like it's a certain level of getting yourself into it that being said like creativity in a vacuum is hard the tyranny yes. of the blank page is difficult <sighs> having yeah. system gives us a skeleton that lets us kind of hang our hat on it and then as far as like what i'm looking for in the system of like trying to personalize i want options that let me kind of put my own spin on how it works or how I approach mm -hmm. it or or to put more of my own personality in. Um, you know, uh let's let's talk about a game that I I, I do like, but um <laughs> D D fifth edition, right? Yeah. Like I think it's I think it was way better than a lot of previous editions of D D. Uh you pick a background and your background can then be with any kind of character class, with any kind of, you know, um, ancestry you pick out. And that's cool because, you know, it's like before it was like, you're a fighter. Well, you're dumb. You just are. Right. Like, you yep. don't get a choice. <laughs> and then it's like, ha ha, scholar fighter. I'm smart. Um, yep. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> so you got to expand your 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 origin a lot. But what didn't feel as great was that. After a certain point in character creation, I look and I'm like, if you're not playing a spellcaster or certain classes that have a lot of options, mm -hmm. you basically just kind of grow and have no choices to make. You don't have mm -hmm. input anymore, except for every once in a while you get to, do I choose an attribute or do I choose a feat? And that yep. made me kind of just tune out on it, especially after <laughs> I played Pathfinder 2E and it's suddenly like, I get to pick stuff every level. I get to pick stuff every level. And even though some levels are less exciting than others, like 
at least half of the levels are real exciting because they're your class feats and you get really mm. cool stuff out of them. So mm -hmm. like anywhere where you get choices and the ability to kind of play the game your way and make it feel like something you want to do, I think that's the that's the good stuff. Oh, absolutely. Very cool. So how do we think that character creation in Trash Mob um, stacks up against some of the other games that we've played? I want to know, particularly for you, Melody, were there specific things that you were like, I want this game to have because I don't see this anywhere? Um, yeah, there were certain things I definitely wanted to have. Uh, the whole leveling twist thing for As You Build, I wanted that because I wanted mm -hmm. a... I Because, you know, like... And then the other thing I like out of games is like a certain sense of surprise makes things kind of fun. And so suddenly you're like, mm. ooh, piece of candy, you know, like it's good. Yes. Like, ooh, dopamine hit. I just got a choice between two <laughs> cool things. And yeah. this is the cool thing I'm going to grab. Uh, I think the other thing, I, the other couple things that I really enjoyed with doing it. Um, I like underdog stories. So playing a weak monster out the gate, something I wanted. Mm. Um mm -hmm. And then the idea of having skills that are tiered. So even like a skill that seems kind of not all that great, the fact that, well, but once you've built it up enough, starts yeah. to do really epic stuff. Yeah. I really enjoyed that because it kind of... Yeah, I know that scratches an itch for Ryan of that oh, like yeah. long-term thinking of like, I had to kind of plan it out a little bit. And, you know, mm -hmm. Ryan loves that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the capstones, the crown skills, those were, mm -hmm. those, I didn't think of them at first, but then eventually it hit a point where I'm like, there's something missing and I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And it was that whole, like, there's not really something that hit in the way that said, I am like you know, somehow above the tier I was at before. Right. If you were to kind of measure out like the, you know, relative ranks of play, you've got your weak monster phase where you're just a little thing and you've gotten, you know, some good <laughs> skills. And then you start hitting your evolutions and you start building those skills up. And now you're getting them into ranks that are improved or greater where you're doing bigger stuff and, you know, mm -hmm. it's more effective. You get new form and suddenly you're like humanoid again. It's like if you didn't have that at the start, like if you play a small humanoid, you get a head start on that whole system of mm -hmm. crafting and building and, you know, socializing and stuff. But, you know, you get that and it's suddenly like, OK, cool. Like now there's a whole social aspect of the game that opens up for me along with a crafting aspect. Mm -hmm. And then you hit the tier where you get apex and the crown skills. And suddenly it's like, and now I am probably a nightmare walking the earth, able to <laughs> change the world with my with my very presence, because all of the crown skills are busted good compared to a lot of the other things and yeah. with apex give you access to just this massive amounts of advantage where you can literally change the world and the map and that's pretty cool that is pretty cool yeah i like this feeling like you're getting something new every time um mm -hmm. i know when we talked to uh so it, oh it was grant and chris when we talked about that like one of their design philosophies is no dead levels um and you know not having that feeling like oh okay i don't ha get anything cool until you mm. know four levels later and i have to just like hang out and wait in which case you're not really leveling up then if you're not getting anything for it mm -hmm. and so it, it is satisfying even if it is only plus one to just kind of be able to have a little something mm -hmm. but it, it's not everywhere. like a, it's not a guarantee plus one you know it's it's like every mm -hmm. level has the potential of being epic Right, uh, right, which for sure. which is uh, which is really cool. Yeah, um, and yeah, like the the character creation itself is very simple. Uh, it's it's nice to I, I love that that table at the beginning of like you you did D fours and you created random tables out of them, yes. and it 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 was pretty straightforward. And then you got some cool skills and and got to have a decent like view of kind of what your character is turning into based on those few things right away yeah uh, which was interesting but you you also get that like before we started doing the advancement part um you you get that like confusion of like where where's my character going like how how would this play out uh mm -hmm. like like how would my character survive in this situation it's like you, you just don't know 
because this is like if if we three doing this podcast right now somehow got blasted into another world, uh, we would be like, well, okay, first, what's going on? And B, why can why do we sound like animals? This yeah. is weird. And that's and that's obviously <laughs> there's a big random element. There's like 16 different critters you could end up. So like, yeah, yeah, you know, animals is just one of the possibilities. I mean, it could go full Dark Souls and we might all be just dead people of various yeah. types. Yeah, you could be a skeleton. Yep. Yeah. In which it's, case, did you really survive the plane crash? Yeah, it is. It is wild that you can have those different. It's, it's interesting that we all became animals, mm -hmm. but like it's, it's interesting that we could have had a humanoid. We could have had. And undead, we could have had an animal at the same time, yep, um, yeah. or even or even like a slime or or something like that, right? Yep. Um, and then you could have this motley crew of like survivalists trying to get through, a, and eventually becoming uh, either saviors or destroyers of this world that we've become in. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's uh, that's really compelling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot, uh, there's like a, a lot happening considering it's so deceptively simple at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, because you're just like, you've got your, your like one or two choices and it's like, okay, let's go. And then it's, it really does develop so much from there because we have a lot of games that we've covered where you do a lot of work up front and you play and it's like, well, not really that much mechanically changes over time. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of play out your story and and there's definitely a lot of value in those kinds of games. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know that there are definitely people who are like, okay, I've been playing this for, you know, four weeks and it's the same as it was four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um so in this one really like what you have by the end is totally different. Yeah. from where you started i did each level in a different color on my notes and um you know like there's only like three things in the original green and then from there it's like just a, a rainbow of catastrophe right now but <laughs> um there's i mean just so much changes so much changes mm -hmm, it's yeah. very cool absolutely um so how does the process of character creation reinforce the feel of this game and set expectations for play uh I think I think um, one of the things about it is, is that, you know, the assumption is, is you're in a world that works by a certain level of like video game uh, physics. Right. Yeah. And so starting off, it's like, OK, like I can see basically my character sheet for the most part in character. Like, OK, I'm yeah. aware I have no name right now. I have these different <laughs> skills. OK, I can go mm -hmm. see descriptions of what they do. All right, so this is what I'm capable of right now. And then from there, you're approaching the world with a certain level of knowing there's these video game mechanics. So you go and see a, a group of, uh, let's say, you know, the first thing you run into is a group of level six zombies. And they are uh, in not instead of like a small group, it's a full swarm. And you just go, mm -hmm. <laughs> nope, I am <laughs> not going to be able to fight that right now. We are not uh -huh. doing that. Uh, so, you know, you thankfully your advantage roll came out. You didn't accidentally stumble in them and have to fight them anyway and then run away. So you just mm -hmm. carefully slink back into the shadows. So then you're like, OK, how do I want to deal with that? You might go find something weaker to engage with. Mm -hmm. But you could also go, OK, I'm going to sit and I'm going to study this horde of zombies and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to take them out. And, you know, we're in an icy wasteland like we're going to lure them to this lake. We're going to lure them to this lake and let them fall through the ice. It's like, OK, cool. I made a really good research role on this uh, idea. And suddenly I have frost attack and it's like, never mind, we're bringing the lake to them. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, or you do a skill grind and suddenly you're like, OK, this skill is now good enough. I should be able to pull off something. And so there's mm -hmm. definitely a level of like leveling yourself up in a tactical fashion for your survival story. Mm -hmm. And that being an in-character action and not just an out-of-character, like, how do I cheese the system? It's like, no, no, really. Right. In the game, you should be trying to cheese the system a little. Because yes. you're trying to live, not messing yeah. around. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that just brings a different kind of aspect to it because character creation and character leveling is part of your in-game experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
I, I can imagine that the the character creation being kind of that transition point uh, once you create your original character uh, and then explain how they died. Now you're at the character creation screen. Yeah. In whatever game that we're popping into. But then you never get to name your character. You just <laughs> yeah. go into the thick of it and knowing that you've got, what, three, four skills yep. to start off with. Yep. And that's it. Uh, and, and what type you are and all that sort of fun stuff. It's like, uh, goodness, uh, you, you know that you're in for a wild ride when you don't have too many options at the beginning. And you know that those options will eventually be coming. Yep. Yeah, it's it's definitely truncated at the start. Like, I do think that gives more weight to the choice of the fourth pick. Because it's like, all right, cool. I am playing a what now? Oh, I got familiar. Yeah. This is great if I'm social and terrible if I want to do anything else. Okay, uh-huh. <laughs> cool. My fourth pick is going to really matter. Because if I want to be combative, I'm going to need to find something that supports that. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. and you know so taking that fourth pick it's a world of difference because the skills are so very different like well the difference between whether you fly or not that's a pretty big yeah. character difference mm-hmm. I mean so it's it's uh, yeah I don't know mm-hmm. it's small but I think it works I think it's weighted yeah absolutely yeah. One of the things that we like to talk about is the character sheets and the design of the character sheets, the way that they're set up. Um, What does that tell us about playing? And we think about something like D&D, where it has, you know, your stats and things like that, and, you know, a very specific spot for your weapons and things like that tells us that we're doing a lot of combat. Right. Um, What do you think, um, as far as your character sheets, what do you think it, it tells people about the game? Were there specific things that you felt like were really important to have up front and like in big, bold letters as opposed to other things that you decided not to put there? Um, I wanted to try and make it so that the uh, system was accessible as possible for somebody who is new and didn't know it inside out because mm-hmm. yeah, I've been playing <laughs> around with the system for most of a year now. And so like some of it I can do purely from memory. But sure. if you've not done that, uh, you need a way to kind of organize things. So the first sheet, we have the previous life, current life thing. And that's kind of just your good starter point. There's a press start sign at the top and there's sort of a blue grid Mm -hmm. in the background. And I made it look kind of like a video game selection screen because I want to get that feel across. Um, Yeah. So so like, yeah, your previous life, current life, you have the name before your job class and how, why you died. You know, scribble as much in there as I guess you can fit. Uh, And then current life, you skip over name, you put in your type, your formula level and your starter skills. You can put in a picture if you have access to one. Um, From there, the pages get a little bit samey, but um, I tried to make it so that certain things could be easier to access. Second page kind of has a diagram of health levels uh, Mm -hmm. to make it easier to kind of know what you should or shouldn't have. because if you're a higher level than an enemy, you get like a bonus health level for those fights. Uh, oh, okay. This abstraction is there because, well, I, I I do not have like a full, you know, uh, team to develop an entire MMO for me. So instead, <laughs> I would rather have an abstraction of going, OK, yeah, this, you know, you being higher level and having an extra health level, that's representing the fact you have like 10,000 extra hit points. And if you're mm-hmm. five levels higher, you get two health levels because you're that much more. Um, and then, like, you know, from there, you start getting dice penalties as your body starts kind of, mm-hmm. you know, wearing out unless you have one of the skills that gives you the, like, free health levels that uh, don't have any penalties associated with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, below the health levels, we have an attack die pool and a defense die pool. And you'll kind of notice that there's uh, numbers on those that sort of how much are you getting out of it? Basically, Mm. any one of the categories can give you zero, one, or two dice, depending on what you got. So if you have a high enough level of an attack skill, that'll give you two dice. If you just have an attack skill, it'll give you one. And if you have no attack skill, you'll have zero for that part of the die pool. And so without getting into um, crown skills, um basically 
it's one of those things of these are set up so that you can quickly go, okay, I've got enough boost, enough movement, enough attack. I got a one base and my class is like farmer, so it doesn't help me for attack. So uh, I've got a whole seven dice here for my Mm -hmm. attack die pool so i wanted it to be that make it easy and accessible for for people to figure out what their dice pools are going to look like okay um it's the same thing with the defense die pool it's a little more simplified because there's not as many things that go into it you may have it Mm -hmm. at zero uh like a lot of anime attack tends to be favored over defense um the pages from there are pretty samey and pretty simple it's just a breakdown of uh attack skills defense skills boost skills movement skills and the last page has crown skills and a little spot for equipment knowledges other skills and statuses because yeah things can get more complicated when you actually make contact with the game like your attack Mm -hmm. skills defense skills boost movement all that can just slot into these and you can write down what its level is what page number to find it on uh you can always if you need to just print out the uh skill cards because they're built so you can actually record on them rather than Mm -hmm. uh you know just using the character sheet to keep it all organized uh apex and crown skills same kind of deal as everything else uh the last part equipment knowledges other skills and statuses yeah once you've hit humanoid you can build various equipment or if you fight other humanoids they're pretty much always assumed to be equipped to the best of their ability so if you beat them you can jack their stuff and and start using (laughs) it obviously um yeah you know and uh the same kind of uh thing knowledge is if you do research roles uh in some cases you can gain specific kind of research role you need to find either a intelligent monster settlement or a peaceful land to do studies in but Mm -hmm. you can get permanent knowledge skills uh that then give you bonus dice in certain situations or uh basically crafting formulas that you no longer have to um it's no longer a chance of whether you build it or not you can build it as long as you have the stuff and there's a couple different statuses that also kind of come up in the game because of uh, some things uh, will give you weird bonuses that actually stick around or weird mm. penalties. Uh, one of the, for instances, is if you get taken out, like if you lose a battle, there's a, okay, how did you actually survive instead chart? Um, oh, right. Because almost every isekai protagonist has been saved by luck at least once. And if the sure. game has just hosed you, like <laughs> that was all really bad luck. None of that was my fault. I want to keep playing. You can roll in this chart for something that manages to save your butt, whatever it happens mm-hmm. to be. And, uh, you know, one of the entries has a uh, you survive somehow, like everything leaves you for dead, but you have a semi permanent injury status that doesn't go away until mm. until you find a healing shrine or you find uh, or you get an evolution or something else to fix it. Uh, okay. So there's there's different things you can get that stick around that aren't just uh, the normal skill system. And so that last little page is for those kind of things. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I loved uh because when I first saw the the character sheets, it really has that eight bit uh role playing game vibe to it, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, which is if if I'm gonna be playing this constantly and I'm looking at this like eight bit video game, I'm constantly gonna be reminded I'm playing the role playing equivalent of a video game. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um which which really will would get me into that meta mindset of all right um if i were playing an rpg at this point uh and i know there's a boss coming up ahead uh i'm gonna need to grind a few levels before i get to that boss Mm -hmm. so let's let's uh let's go find some uh some forest area with uh with whatever uh creatures that can buff us up a bit and just grind through some of them uh so that way we can gain a few levels and and then we can finally take on that boss or whatever right yeah um so i mean just looking at the sheet itself is telling me that you're going to have those sorts of experiences playing this game uh which is uh really really cool um and then the the skills being kind of the most prominent area wise of the sheet tells you that the skills are going to be really important uh, yeah. throughout play yeah, for sure that's that's the bulk of your character like really like you yeah. might get an extra class or two but 
you know, that just happens sometimes. I was surprised you both managed to get it, but hey, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fine. It was only a one in what? Not 16, like one in 12 chance. So, well, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fair. We did. Totally we did a decent number. Of so. We did. Chances uh, are. Yeah. But no, I, I love uh, I love how the, the sheet kind of sets you up for pretty much everything we've been talking about here. Um, mm -hmm. and, and plenty of space for advancing, uh, by adding new skills and everything like that as well. So, um, I thought that was really cool as well. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the questions that I like asking the most when we have, when we have developers on, um, uh, is the question of, oh, what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in the system? And what is one of your favorite parts? So I think maybe one of the biggest flaws is that it is like really simple. Like you start really small and I've talked about, you know, good systems let you put yourself into it. And mm. I feel, and the thing is, as a system, I feel the way you put yourself into this is that you have so much control to approach problem solving on your <laughs> own terms like okay this mm. is my situation it's a force constrained situation how i approach i have a lot of options beyond just my skills like where am i going what am i doing mm. am i going to try to talk to them am i going to fight them am i going to run away like all of that has a certain level of okay you can make some choices um yeah. but then actual character creation it's like no you you have some limits you can choose certain options for character creation to change it like you may decide okay we're going to start this game with more skills you could start with the more rare skills like uh if you take rapid growth which is one of the things you can get uh mm -hmm. you're like okay i want a shorter game like i'm going to take rapid growth so these leveling rolls i'm going to start getting the good stuff real soon yeah. um <laughs> you know <laughs> Or, or you can take one of the crown skills in Apex and be like, no, I want one of those cool cheater powers out of anime that they start with where it's like, oh. <laughs> I'm going to win anyway. Like, heck with it. Yeah. I did a, I did rebuilds of a bunch of uh, different anime characters on Twitter last week. And, you know, some of the more powerful ones uh, was Rimuru Tempest from that time I got reincarnated as Slime. He is probably easily three to four times as powerful as a normal starting character just out the out the gate without any <laughs> any extra modifications like you got extra resistances you've got you know uh the knowledge crown skill essentially you know, have a level of apex because you scare people oh, you also got to have magic yeah. name because you name you do all this stuff <laughs> okay i got the sheet to get wow that's a, that's a much bigger jump so if you're gonna like go for that you can just add more on but yeah, I do feel it's one of those you're also to be fair, that character montages through what may essentially be your entire first arc of playing this game. So, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it, it may also ruin your experience to throw too much. So I, I think maybe uh -huh. that's the weaknesses is like just your initial inputs are very, very focused and limited. So mm -hmm. there's only so much customization you get out for the start. And, and that makes sense, right? Uh, especially if you're if you're hopping into uh, a, a eight bit or sixteen bit equivalent of video game RPG, yeah. where they literally only give you sixteen options to start with, and that's it. You know, well, what what can you do? You, you get what you get. That's true. Um, and then you, and then if they've in, in those old games, like then you can do the customization post character creation. You know, it's funny because I started a game recently. Um, well, restarted a game, um, is playing Borderlands 2. But, like, I remember this being like, okay, there's, like, a bajillion different guns and I can have my loadout all these different ways. And then I start and it's like, they hand you one gun and you have two weapon slots. And I was like, I don't even have grenades yet. Like, where's all my stuff? And, like, forgetting that, like, because I'd played through it and played through the DLC and was, like, level mm -hmm. 100 or whatever by the end, forgetting that, like, when you start the game, you start with nothing. Like, you can't have grenades. You only have two of the four weapon slots that you eventually have. Your backpack mm -hmm. carries, like, three things that, like, you don't <laughs> start that way. And I remember it being this, like, oh, there's all these choices. It's like, 
oh no, there's not mm-hmm. actually, not mm-hmm. until later, not until way, way later. <laughs> so like, it does feel like that though. You know, you start and you have those four things and it's like, off you go. <laughs> Hope for the best. Oh, uh, you also asked what the favorite part was, didn't you? Yes. 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 Okay. I think my favorite thing is, is the gestalt uh, kind of storytelling that goes down. Like when you've got all the elements in place. Like I described it almost like, you know, it's it's like a, a prism or a lens that you're like focusing in and suddenly the picture comes out and you're like, ooh, that's really cool. Like, yeah. you know, you start off with occupation. You're like, OK. And I, I did this as an exercise. Like, I'm pretty sure you get something cool out of this when you just dial in all the things. And I was like, I'll just test it once. I was like, OK, I'll start off with a profession most people wouldn't think is all that great. And I was like, garbage man. All right, cool. So, <laughs> you know, this person's going to take out trash. Um, and then, like, I rolled the thing and it was, uh, I believe, they specifically were chosen for their skills for this new real world. And I'm like, well, that says something, right? Because <laughs> yeah. this is a garbage man and it's like, no, we need you in this other world for some reason. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I rolled up their form type and I got uh, a bug vermin. And I was just mm. like, wait a sec, like they're a garbage Interesting. man. Interesting. And they're and a, a bug, bug and they're needed. And then I was like, they should be a scarab because scarabs are like recyclers, right? Like oh, they, yeah. they mm-hmm. you know, break things down. And, da, da, da. and I was like, you know, they have a certain sacred like context to them. And then it rolled, it turns out that it was going to take place in a demon city. And so I just got this kind of idea of okay so this guy was a garbage man he was having kind of a rough time he literally gets buried in trash in like an accident (laughs) and then he suddenly pops out of the trash as this beetle and it's just a trash pile in another world literal trash mob of trash mob here um (laughs) and then you know from there they're this scarab and you know like you could already see the pieces kind of coming together like oh no like Mm -hmm. you have the sacred duty of recycling things and i have this feeling like they're probably gonna just go around and like annihilating undead and you know other things like that to render this world righteous i'm like no this sounds great and yeah. it's just from random roles and the little pieces kind of coming together with you just have an occupation, kind of the reason on your previous life, where you're at, what your form is, and mm. it all kind of comes together. Uh, yeah. And you, you can feel the, like, more epic story coming out. Yeah. There, there's a lot that is deceptively simple uh, about uh, the character creation in this. Um, like, that, that first batch is three questions. What's your name? What's your occupation and how did you die? And then you answer those three. And like, before we even got to like what we became, Mm -hmm. I had this like image of who this person was Mm -hmm. in their, in their original life. And like, you wouldn't think three questions would do that. Right. But goodness, it, it hits and it hits well. Right. And then when you translate that to, well, oh, how does this person transform into this this other world? Um, like what carries over? Yeah. And and I, I found that kind of influencing my my decisions a bit of like, well, what what would my character want to choose? Right. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, I was a songwriter or a song singer in the past life and may, maybe maybe instead of just being this ultimate destruction goose, which I wanted, uh, <laughs> I became, I became the face. I became mm-hmm. the pop the popular person, quote unquote. Yeah. Uh, that, that people liked and, and everything and kind of leaned into it a, a bit more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. I like seeing how those things kind of stack over time. And, um, you know, I, I always love games where like that one little decision where, that we're just like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if and then like by the end, that's the whole thing. Like that's, yeah. you know, <laughs> become this core concept that I didn't think would really stick. Um, and it just mm-hmm. shows how how the game like kind of allows you to stack those things and allows you to take this one thing that I've decided is important and just sort of mm-hmm. carry it with you, um, which is it, always really it, nice. It, it's like a, it's an avalanche of snowballs. Yes. Uh, you yeah. just throw a bunch of little snowballs out at the beginning, and then by the time you're done, you've got these giant boulders of snow mm-hmm. uh, that have a lot of substance to them. Yes. 
And then you yeah. have a character That's named pretty... Snowball, and it's perfect. It all right? just comes back around again. Just like that. <laughs> just just yeah. like that. <laughs> um, so, I mean, normally we we do our, our fan fiction section here. Ooh. Now, by virtue of the fact that we did some of our, our leveling and stuff, we, yeah. we have talked a little bit about some of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm interested in what we think um, kind of happens here. Like, we're, we're in this plane crash. We... Mm-hmm. Definitely don't eat each other yep. uh, once we're turned into animals. What, how does this go? How does this go from here? Gosh, I mean, we're in a desolate wasteland of snow and ice mm-hmm. uh, and undead, apparently. Yes. Uh, multiple versions of undead that we've run into. Right. Um, as well as like, you know, other other types of. Uh, Arctic critters. Uh, Arctic critters of sorts that are not safe like diseased or poisonous so we've got a bunch of resistances from all that right yeah yep yep we did um it, it yeah feels... definitely not for me doing those things too mm. right yeah. i mean it feels like we were on the run for a bit right right uh, yeah. just trying to scamper along and survive mm-hmm. um and and like there had it feels like there was an inflection point at some point where we started being able to fight back um, yeah. or at least you two were able to fight yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I was playing a fighty character. Like, there's a very good chance. It's like, okay, it's the bunny. Like, all right, well, we got a bunny, a goose, and a snake. Okay, watch out for the snake. Why is the bunny charging? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Snake's just a distraction. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested in, like, long-term, like, what would be... Because I think eventually you get to a point where survival is not the goal anymore we've kind of figured out like you've been living here long enough that like we know what we're doing we know where food is and how to you know so what do you start doing from there what do we like are we trying to like build our own society are we trying to get back to being people yeah there's there's a lot of different ways that could go based on like what you're coming across what's going on and we only got a peek Mm. into what we did like we did get a peek because we know like okay we ran into some undead we ran into some dangerous creatures yeah and you know, we started off with this, 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 uh, you know, cavern of idols. And I'm like, all right, cool. And we were, and the, the thing we had is we, we got rewarded for doing a good deed. So something put us here, um, as kind of a reward and you go, okay, like this is a snowy, you know, wasteland that doesn't sound yeah. like necessarily a reward, but we're right. alive again and we're getting all this power and we came out of a cave of idols. So it is entirely possible. We're basically um becoming some sort of deities that once existed here and when you get towards a world that's like snowy and like messed up like that it may be that we're there to do some big important things that need to get done i i really like um the thought of living out our best lives uh through this experience uh like figuring out that it's you know Hey, maybe I, we were not sure this could be real. This could be uh, like we're stuck in a video game somehow, yeah. right? Um, but like, I mean, uh, Amelia, your characters, like, I I figured out a way to summon these haunted cards. Can I? <laughs> can I live out my Yu Gi Oh dreams yes. in this world? Yes. Can I? Can I? And and I'm like, I figured out how to talk as a goose. Right. And, and sane as a goose. Can can I become like this world's foremost like goose idol? Right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, goose like... sating goose idol. Mm-hmm. And you managed to become strong in like one of the like the most like scared creatures. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So like. No. So like they they become a uh, terrifying battle bunny by the time that was getting around to the end with. <laughs> right. You know. Incredible bunny strength. Um, yeah. yeah. I can imagine some, like, a wicked bunny parkour right. happening. Yeah. So some of the stuff that will happen during the course of the game uh, that is likely to happen. At some point, we'd probably meet human adventurers. With the way things went there, it's entirely possible we never met another living humanoid person before we already had humanoid levels ourselves. And yeah. that gives a different kind of weight to things. Because when you meet humanoids early on, oh, there's a good chance they're going to try and fight you and take you out because yeah. you can't talk yet. But you could talk. And we all had like semi-humanoid forms. 
They might still be distrustful, but there's a chance with your charm skill and everything else, when we meet some people and suddenly yeah. go, hi, they say hi back instead of, oh, God, kill it. So, like, right. <laughs> you know, that leads to the like, OK, so we might have a better cooperation route in front of us than we might have had yeah. otherwise. Um, the other thing that's likely to come out of things at some point is, you know, so the routes for getting out, right? This mm -hmm. is, this is gameplay stuff. One thing is, is we could start working with adventurers and if we do enough, like essentially good deeds, like help them on all their missions and stuff, mm -hmm. one of them will eventually be like, all right, you guys are cool. Let's, let's get you out of here. Like, do you want to come to somewhere that is not a snowy, icy hell? And be like, yes, yeah. I would love to see a civilization. Yes. I would like oh, soup. grass. That sounds nice. Soup sounds incredible. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so that is one way you can get out. But the other route is, is there is always eventually going to spawn a raid boss. And when you've beaten the raid boss, things change around on the charts a little where you will eventually find your own route out of the dangerous mm. environment. And you never yeah. know quite what it's going to be because it's essentially an amalgamation of a bunch of different things. And then you kind of stylistically sort of, you know, massage it to whatever, considering we're all Arctic, you know, themed animals. Right. Uh, if I were to like rule right now for like a general type just a just as a, a thought experiment for where our fanfic might go like well what kind mm -hmm. of beastie do we end up like having to battle um so so i got food animal for its base oh. type okay great <laughs> and a food animal in that kind of area you know like honestly like you know to, to, to go back you know we we were, we're missing the goat i think a, yeah. a like mountain goat but then like you know, once you do that, you also get like an evolution bit, and uh, mm. I got like aberration. So, oh. you know, it could be like this, like, I, don't know, I mean, could even go like a Lovecraft vibe kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah, we basically had to fight Nair Lothotep to get out of here. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's okay. We're going to clean their clock. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we can do it. Whatever, no it's fine, it's fine. It's like, fine. You know, okay, yep, yep, that's a horror with a thousand goat legs and eyes all over it. And, <laughs> you know, it's maybe breathing a little bit of fire. Yeah. <sighs> you know, it'll be nice to be warm for a little bit. It's incinerating things to a crisp. <laughs> no, 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 it's going to be fine. We've, we've developed immunities to almost everything. We can learn how to be fireproof. Somebody start a fire. I'm going to roll around in it. Uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like... Oh, man. So, yeah, eventually we probably slay this terrifying abomination living out in the snowy wastes. And then yeah. once we've done that, uh, you know, depending on the friends we've made or not made, probably move on to uh, to where we would would kind of fade out and go, OK, that's the end of season one. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, li I like that. Uh, there, there's kind of a ending point that you're working towards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Which is really interesting because like, you know, a lot of different role playing games, you can you can have an ending point to the adventure. But then uh, a lot of people play sandbox style where it's just like it, it goes on forever as long mm -hmm. as you can think of new things. I mean, you can like there's nothing that yeah. stops you from being like, I've found a peaceful land. What are you going to do? I'm going to go get a sandwich. I'm going to get a shower. I'm going to buy a house with all of the resources I have. And I'm going to yeah. go back into this thing because I think there's another raid boss in here and I want to be level 99 before I'm done. Yeah. I, absolutely. If yeah. That's what I, you want to like, do. Go for it. But yeah. I mean, if I were playing this game, I would want to min max it and get to 99 and, of and carry 99 health potions and 99 tents and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and never use them. How many shelters right. have you but made? Just in case. Just, just in, in case. case. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to be the guy that's caught without one. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that, oh, yeah this sounds would. amazing I, it really i i really love the thought of us like getting into this and wanting to live out our best lives and then once we finally like start getting a hold of that uh then this raid boss comes into play and we're like oh well that throws a wrench into things a little bit mm -hmm. but you know we've got all this cool stuff uh, let's see what happens. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, take it down and and then get ready for, for phase two later on. 
um, yeah. yeah, or hop back in and get to 99. And we probably all have uh, real cool titles by then. And oh, yeah, oh, yeah, mega definitely. superpowers. Yeah. And yeah, oh, that sounds so fun. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I think we'll have named at least one of the like the objects you summon. Probably, would it be Exodia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, probably. Uh, I mean, probably. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, I couldn't. I could name it, mm-hmm. and it could become like permanent. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be amazing. Yep. Oh, I wanna. I want your. I want to make your Yu Gi Oh cards come to life forever. I was just thinking about this too. I'm like, if I'm an Arctic snake and I'm white, can I like slowly work my way toward being the blue eyes white dragon? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Like, okay. That's it, obvious, right? Again, like that's like the only to, choice here. Back to the aesthetics are yours to, you know, do how you yeah. want to do. Like, you know. It's the only answer for Arctic snake, I think. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Arctic snake is blue eyes white dragon. Yep. Like I, I'm pretty sure with my my bunny person, I want Snowball to, uh, you know, they possibly ditch the name Snowball when they finally get that apex level and they're allowed to name yeah. themselves and get a title. Uh-huh. I don't for know sure. what that name would be, but you know, Snowball's fun for the meantime. Um, might change their name to Avalanche or something insane like that. Oh, I love it. Um, oh, that'd be nice. And then, uh, and then it could be called Ava for short, which is not bad. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, like, and then hitting that, uh, you know, looking somewhere between like a cross of like, okay, they're a fun, like, buddy anime girl crossed with like Doomsday out of Superman with all these mm-hmm. bone yeah. spurs <laughs> and stuff. Like, oh dear God, like, yep, yep, this, this yeah. giant bone monster bunny girl kind of is gonna horror come. Horror is this? It's this adorable horror. Uh-huh. I would definitely be doing superhero landings. Like that would happen at least once. Just oh, mm-hmm. absolutely! Oh goodness! Yep, I'd be wrong not to. Yeah. Uh huh. Goodness gracious! I I want to play this so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that is probably one of the the best things I've heard because I. You know, I made this because I wanted to play it so bad. So knowing other mm. people right. want to play it makes me very yeah. happy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do want to know where this goes. I mm. do. Desperately. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what? Well, how does this mess become like a real, like uh-huh. cohesive? I need to find out. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> we won't because that's not what we do no, here. No. But, um, yeah. you know, I would like to. <laughs> um so i know we took it up a level uh last episode uh as part of the character creation but uh i know we, we did a lot of hand waving uh for the discussion of how uh things like mechanically exactly worked yeah um so i'm wondering if we can if we can take it up a level again uh-huh. uh and go into a little bit deeper discussion about that take it up a level take it up a level well, so you kind of walked us through things that, like, you were like, okay, for this level, I've rolled this up, and this is oh, what yeah, happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. can you talk a little bit about, like, what you did behind the scenes sure. to make that happen? Yeah, no, that's totally... Uh, so uh, in the book, there are leveling twist charts, and the whole point for those is you roll on them to see uh, what your level's going to give you. And mm-hmm. some levels will be good, some levels will be bad, depending on how well you roll, and... What happens with those charts is that they affect one another. So, for instance, your first roll has no modifiers to it. You roll three die four, you see what happens. So that means you can get anywhere from, you know, uh, three to 12. Mm -hmm. And that means you could roll on the basic chart, the improved chart, or the greater chart. All of those give you a bonus to your next roll. If you roll really low, that stinks, but you get a plus three on your next roll, which means if you mm. roll good, you might even end up on the master chart and get something really amazing. On oh, the yeah. other hand, you know, like you could roll greater chart, get something really good to your first level, but you only got a plus one and then you kind of middle around. So it kind of bounces around between, you know, the basic improved and greater chart most of the time in your early levels and then occasionally breaches over into master if you take actions that'll give you other bonuses for instance Mm. there's level grinds right and so if you pull off a level grind where you've beaten an enemy without taking damage and then you go okay now that i've done that we're going to grind this area you can only do it once 
and then mm. you're going to roll for the grind to see how it went, and you'll get so many levels out of that. Nice. So, so there are montages in the game built in to skip over kind of the, mm-hmm. the boring section of this is what you would do logically. I don't want to play through all of it because I don't want to just sit mm-hmm. here rolling dice all day like I'm yeah. grinding a dungeon in real life. I want to get to the good stuff. Um, so if you do level grind, it gives you more bonuses to rolling on the level twist charts uh, mm-hmm. if you roll really well. And so then it starts being possible that you start getting rolls that can get you onto the master chart. There's also a skill called rapid growth. Uh, you can only get it through mystery skills. And mm. mystery skills come up when you do a skill grind. Skill grind is you have a skill you have, you want to get it better, so you're going to practice it somehow. And mm. essentially, you need some level of justification for how you do that. Um, there was a point in the gremlin game i played where we captured a lightning pixie underneath a metal helmet and took turns letting it shock us um (laughs) but kept it contained and then slowly built lightning resistance so we'd be able to like deal with that later um you know so you need to come up with a way you can do a practice of it and sometimes that means oh i'm gonna go do live combat stuff and let things hit me or try something out on them you can do the research rolls where if you roll really well, you get a new skill related to what you've learned about. Essentially, your mm-hmm. learning activates the video game system and suddenly it's like, here's the skill. And you're like, oh, well, all right, nice. then. Thank you, game, for giving me that. <laughs> you know, I tried something out and it worked out for me. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a couple different ways to get skills beyond just the, the straight up leveling stuff. But I, I'm getting a little lost in the weeds here. Uh with doing rapid growth with doing level grinds those start giving you bonuses for your leveling twist charts Mm. and so eventually you'll go from rolling on the master chart and you might get high enough to hit the ultimate chart and that's nothing but like the good stuff like Mm -hmm. you can get evolutions get a boost to all your skills you can get new form which gives you the humanoid skill five to all your original skills and a new area skill. So that's kind of like where you start being able to take big groups of people because you get that area skill and it starts being like, okay, cool. What's there? Oh, that's a swarm. What's your area skill at? Uh, my skills at greater. Yeah, all those extra health levels it has don't exist to me. I'm going to go ahead yeah. and nuke it with my fireball or whatever. Oh, nice. And then, you know, if you roll the best you can, which if you had a bonus enough to get on the ultimate chart, there's a pretty good chance uh, that you'll roll high enough to get apex anyway. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you'll end up getting apex. Uh, what does this entry say? You've begun to become something that terrifies the world. Some call them demon <laughs> kings and queens, others calamities. Whatever the title, your power's potential is the kind that can raise armies and fell nations. Uh, you gain a title and a name. You get an additional level with a plus three bonus on the leveling charts. You only gain that once. Uh, you gain a level of the apex skill and you gain a crown skill. And the crown skills are like, well, I mean, they're they're called the crown skills for the re- for a reason. And yeah. <laughs> I would say that's one of your like most important, you know, choices because by the rules as they are written important to put it that way because you know in your solo (laughs) game you may decide no i want all the power um Uh you can only ever get one of them to the ultimate level okay so you can get multiple crown skills but the one you get that's gonna be kind of your thing so if you're like all right what do i really want uh you know you're gonna want to think on it before you just pick you know randomly like no i'll just take this like if you take knowledge congratulations you're going to be like the smartest person in the world if you take Mm -hmm. you know uh movement you're going to be the fastest this is kind of how those things go so like whatever you pick just be Mm -hmm. sure you want it and it will make your character capable of doing stuff that nobody else can do that's really cool and so that's kind of the journey as far as like the those charts go it builds up over time you get bonuses on when you hit certain levels to those charts too. So mm-hmm. inevitably you'll get them, 
but you just don't know when you're gonna get them i was doing yeah. a home game and i mean we got lucked out and we got new form real early and then we got evolution like a moment after that when we rolled one extra level right yeah. and i have a game where uh the character is in their 20s i think mm. no evolutions or one evolution no new form so oh, wow. so vastly delayed um you know in comparison like growth wise they're still very scary but they're just not scary in the same yeah. way absolutely yeah. uh it, it's interesting because like in in this game uh the leveling up is like almost pure mechanical right mm -hmm. in terms of like you're gonna get the stuff it it does have an effect on the narrative mm -hmm. but it, it's 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 interesting because the of the randomness mm -hmm. right yeah so it's like if, if this were a real world and all of a sudden, now my goose can shoot fireballs. It's like, it's like, where where did that power come from? It's like, you don't have to answer that. Where did that power come from question, right? Well, that's kind of actually one of the things that I, I like about the crown of knowledge is that mm. if you get the crown of knowledge, I mean, depending if you're in a narrated game, this is something where the GM's got to come clean with you. But yeah. uh, on the other hand, if you're in a multiplayer game or a solo player game, it's suddenly, OK, cool. You start learning truths of the world. What are they? And you yeah. get to like yeah. define them. It's just like the reason gooses can shoot fireballs on this world is because our snowy world is actually from a like post apocalyptic wasteland. Uh, there's <laughs> a level of radiation. Everything on this planet has evolved to <laughs> use that radiation to enhance oh, itself. Yeah. <laughs> and so all the magic we have is really just wacko superpowers because. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so it's it's interesting because like you go from that uh, like no knowledge sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take out the crown of knowledge uh, potential there, if you or if you don't go down that path, uh, it's just like these things are coming out of the blue because you're in a video game, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, of sorts, and and that's fine. It's like if I if I suddenly learn how to talk as a goose, it's like well that's because I leveled up. <laughs> And yeah, and yeah. now and now my advancement has an effect on the narrative. Now I can utilize those new abilities uh, to further the story in a completely different direction yeah. than what I was imagining I could do, you know, five minutes ago. Right. Yeah. Which is really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Like more traditional games, you're going to be like, well, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, level up and I'm going to gain this feat, mm -hmm. but it's because I've been practicing you know, doing this thing uh, on downtime, and and now I've got this cool ability to to do parkouring, you know, or whatever, right. you know. <laughs> uh, but like here, it's just like, hey, uh, I know kung fu, uh, the the famous uh, neo line from yeah. the right, right. Well, I mean, and that's some of that comes down to like, you know, your aesthetic preferences again, like how you want to do it. A lot of these skills mm -hmm. are made to be semi generic for a reason and, mm -hmm. you know, fully encourage reskinning like, OK, the rabbit had disease attack because rodent it generally assumed more of like, OK, like you're getting a filth fever type bite from a rat or whatever. But I could yeah. have went like, nope, it's like dim mock. What? Oh, yeah. It's just a martial <laughs> art technique where they punch somebody and they just punch people like around their lungs or poison yeah. their chi or whatever. You know, you can decide like, nope, that's how I'm doing it. Or even yeah. rename the skill like, oh, yeah, this is like, you know, poison chi punch. It's not the same as poison poison, but, you know, it right. does the job. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> You know, because ultimately it's your game and you're building that world and you want it to be mm -hmm. something you enjoy playing, you know, feel free to mod it. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. I uh, love well, that. Is there anything else that you want to talk about Trash Mob that we haven't covered yet um, before we head out? Um, Boy, I think the only the only thing I might hit because it just comes to mind is like, OK, we've we've come up with all these different ways the characters advance. And the only one I left out is there are um, magical places that you can mm. find on the map. And so, like, there is a uh, place of miracles of healing, miracles of travel, miracles okay. of materialization and miracles of transformation. So 
you never know if you're going to find these or not until you hit the point in the game where you can start doing seekings, which is I have run out of things that have cha that can challenge me on the map. So I'm basically making rolls to find stuff I want to find. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're once again, it's a it's a montage thing. It skips over the boring parts and it's like, OK, OK, cool. I make this roll. I make this other roll. OK, so it takes me seven days and I find a shrine of, let's say, transformation. And maybe I started off as undead and I'm like, you know what? I'd really like skin on my bones and a pulse again. I'm going to go into this thing and <laughs> use uh, use a magic resource that I've charged up with a powerful monster soul. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to go in and I'm going to see what I come out as and hope for the best. Amazing. Yeah. So there's more ways to change around what your experience is and your character, even just interacting with the world than yeah. just the choice ones, too. So, oh, so good. Tons of stuff. Very cool. Well, uh, Melody, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Trash Mob. Thanks so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. It Absolutely. was. This was really enjoyable. Uh huh. Uh, can you remind everyone where they can find you online and what sort of things you're working on? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, you can find me uh, at Mother Multiverse Media on itch, or you can look up Mother Multiverse. Uh, on twitter if you want to you know send me messages or something uh as far as things as i'm working on uh trash mobs just come out uh plans for the future include a trash mob advanced uh guide which will have uh 48 i believe more trash mob types that you can play Oh, um, nice yeah there's gonna be a massive expansion of critters and an already very diverse collection um mm -hmm. there's going to be more locales that you can play out with some modifications Ooh. to kind of uh do different things if you want the the short preview the game i've been playing i am a psychic flower in a galactic zoo um Ooh. yeah having to deal with like robots and uh the fact that nothing has wanted peace everything's wanted to fight that's been awful Oh, uh, <laughs> I've been winning, but dang, it's it's been rough. Um, it's mm -hmm. tiring. <laughs> I think I finally made some friends last game. Weird floating brain monsters. Um, yep, nice. weird floating brain <laughs> monsters like you do. Um, but yeah, so Deluxe adds just a lot of different modes. Uh, it'll, it'll add more modes for play. There's going to be a guide for playing human beings if, you, if you're if you into that kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> I guess. You know, here you go. In case you want to play a more traditional isekai, here's some human uh -huh. rules with classes and things. Oh, there um, you go. And uh, then it's going to have some extra, extra skills, uh, extra uh, crown skills. And some help and full guidelines on how to further tweak and tailor your game and maybe even make up your own crown skills if you wanted to. Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. And uh, after that, there's the season two game, which is uh, Peaceful Lands Deadly Schemes, mm. uh, in which it goes from, OK, you've been in a harsh environment and become this super monster. Now it's how you interact with the world uh, on a greater mm -hmm. level. Uh, you know, how important people, nations, powerful adventurers, other powerful monsters and everything else react yeah. to your presence uh, for good or for ill. And and then how you, you come to grips with that and how you deal with that. Oh, it's amazing. Exactly. I, I'm really excited to, to see those expansions and whatnot because... Uh, uh, Having more options mm -hmm. uh, really is going to appeal to me and, and I know a lot of our uh, audience as well. So uh, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll have uh, links in the show notes. Uh, so take care. Take a look at that, too. Well, uh, thank you again, Melody. And thank you to everyone for listening. Yeah, we'll see you next time. This was a this was a really fun series. Uh, I can see this game having a lot of uh, replay value mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm really excited to see what new options come out of the deluxe version um, be really excited to, to pick that up and and see what season 2 is all about like what happens after you become a, an all powerful uh, god 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really where it's all at, right? It's like, I can work my way up to being an all-powerful cop, but what then? You know? What then? Exactly. What then? Like, what's left for me? <laughs> you know? So, I really, really, yeah, really I, need to I, find I really, that out. I'm, I'm really curious about that. I would love to play uh, something like that and... Goodness gracious, there's a lot of cool options that we, we could dive into. Uh, yeah, in, I definitely think like that. that the randomization of the leveling process really, really makes it replayable because it's it's never going to be, you yeah. know, the same. Like we've talked about that in some games that like the way that you level up is like, OK, by the end, mm -hmm. every person in this class is going to look similar to every other person in this class. And like exactly. this game does not have that problem at all. Mm -hmm. not a, <laughs> at no, all. No. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. Um, and I'd love to hear like what comes out of it if other people pick it up. Be yeah, a, absolutely. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. For now, before we let you get to the outtakes and our two week break, we have a couple calls to action. First up, as always, if you enjoy what we are doing on our show, and um, want to check out other shows on the network, if you like other shows on the network, if you want to just support the network and the people making these things and get access to things in the secret archive, mm -hmm. uh, you can find the One Shot Network Patreon um, and back it there. Anything of $5 and up gets you access to that secret archive where we have our bonus content that we are hoping to put some more in soon. Um, that is at patreon.com slash one shot podcast right mm -hmm. that, okay i always think can never remember if it's one shot network or one shot podcast yep um <laughs> it's somewhere in there it's I, I don't know just search for one shot podcast yeah um but you can go check that out again that does help support all of the shows on the network it supports our hosting buys us new equipment and supports the tiny new project falcon mm-hmm and what more could you want? What more right? could you want, right? If you don't, if you're here and you don't even like podcasts, but you like babies, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> I got a deal for you. Absolutely. Um, another way, great way to help out any podcast is to leave reviews. Um, I know it's not the easiest sometimes to leave reviews, but uh, I know if you have Podcast Addict on Android, uh, it's actually pretty quick and painless. I've been doing uh, one per day. Uh, for different podcasts that I listen to, uh, I'm up to day seven as of the release of this episode. So uh, let's see if I can keep the streak going until I run out of podcasts to review. You'll never run uh, out of podcasts. Wow. I mean, I'd have to keep on listening to podcasts and I don't have that sort of time. I know. I know. <laughs> I feel so bad. Like I now that I'm working from home, I've just like my podcast listening has dropped so far down. Like yep. it's I yep. feel so bad. <laughs> I know. Sorry, shows. Sorry, shows. We love you, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you have access to leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, and others, all of those five-star reviews really do help folks find the show. Uh, plus, it's free to do. So We might love as well, free activities. We love free activities, yeah. So you might as well take a few minutes after this episode and do that, uh, especially since we are out of reviews to read right now. Well, and I think, you know, that during this pandemic, it's really hard to find, like, fun, safe activities to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you're just like, oh, I'm sitting in my house. I'm really bored. I've watched all these TV shows. What can I do mm -hmm. that, you know, that is, is safe right now? And I would say that absolutely leaving a podcast review is one of the safest activities that you can engage in right now. That's probably true. <laughs> you know, it's probably true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah take that everyone yeah you know and, there's and you no know excuse not to <laughs> exactly and you know it really makes a difference um i left a review for the the venture maidens uh this morning sunday the the day we're recording this cold open slash call to action uh and and they responded that it made their day so it you does know, it, it really does you yeah. know when that stuff pops up for us we get really excited mm -hmm. um, we keep saying it every time but like please believe us we really do yeah. it really it is important to us yeah it gives so. us life absolutely that is all that we have for this series. So please enjoy the outtakes on your way out. Until next time, stay safe, drink some water, get vaccinated. Everyone, please wear a mask. The pandemic is definitely still going on. Please, mm -hmm. please put a mask on your face, even if you're vaccinated. Thank you. And keep making those amazing people. We will see you next time.
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like One Shot. The most fun way to learn about new games is to play. On One Shot, you can discover the amazing variety in RPGs by listening to actual play. Every week, James D'Amato brings you a new episode with a talented cast of improvisers, game designers, and other notable nerds. At least once a month, One Shot features a new system exploring a wide variety of genres. The stories are self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, and it's a great way to find your new favorite game. Discover the magic of RPGs with OneShot on your favorite podcast app. Mm. Nailed it. Yeah. I even made sure that my... I probably moment too soon, but I think it's going to be real. Close enough. It's fine. Yeah. No, I made sure that I put my microphone back on the correct setting. I have been like, well, I got to mess with my game here a little bit, but um because it was weird i was recording yesterday and like it was picking up all of mark's audio and like right into the right zone and then like not mine and i just like couldn't figure out what it was doing so i have no idea if anybody could hear my witty remarks about children playing video games or not but oh weird (sighs) i hope they could because i had hot takes yeah. Did you have it about on like the age, uh, like seven to fifteen range? Of yeah. Did you have it on the cardioid mode, or did you did it? Flop no, to I switched the... it to whatever. I don't remember which one it is that I usually use because be like the microphone's like on everywhere. the table and like he and I are sitting next to each other and omnidirectional. Do a check real quick. I'm still audible, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, cool, you're good. Cool. Okay, I've I've used Audacity before for some projects, but. Uh, right, audio can I be a nightmare sometimes yep. I'm like okay hold on I don't see me lighting up when I'm starting to talk yeah okay, I mean I as long as check it, that first as long as you got and the way you forms doing, Melody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had um, an awful we had like our last recording though is like the first half of it there's something messed up with my audio and then the second half there's not and it's like mm-hmm. I'm the same person same microphone same desk same everything same settings but it, it chopped settings, off like, every uh, all the frequencies above eight thousand. Yeah, were chopped off completely. So so once you got cleaned up and got rid of most of the reverb, it, it sounds really tinny. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really weird. I don't but know. It, it, it's listenable now, but it's well, just good. it's it's not up to normal quality. Yeah, uh, which is unfortunate. But you know, whatever. It's just so weird that like I don't know why it would do that. You I know, know. it's it's just one of those things. It's. It's computers because they have demons inside them. It's true. 
that's what everybody knows. That's why that's why sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And even people who are experts in them can't figure it out. It's because it's tiny demons in there and you did not make some proper sacrifice that you should have. Yep. Uh, well, you know, they have that guy too. I yep. can say that that is 100%. I know. Um, that's what everyone tells me when I say this. Anybody that, like, works with computers or, I'm like, okay. are like, yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I don't I know went... if I'd call it a demon, but they definitely have <laughs> personalities and spirits. And if you displease the machine. Yeah. Some sort of gremlins. Care. Something. Look, uh, I'm just saying that, like, charts. maybe Warhammer isn't that wrong. Yeah. I, I've got a bachelor in computer science. So, like, you know, I know about these things. Yeah. See? <laughs> From a reputable institution that is not at all known for being a party school. Exactly. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I can't say that part with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> I just did, but it's not true. I know it's not it's not true at all. Um, Here's the thing: I, I never not, went to a single party while I was there. I haven't. I didn't either. <laughs> See, so I don't know. Maybe it's I went to maybe lots it's all of a ruse. Parties at Lawrence, but I never went to one at Oshkosh. I think it's a ruse. I think it is too. I think it's actually lies. No, just kidding. I busted lots of parties there while I was an RA, so oh. I know for a fact that lots of people do. They just never invited me. I guess just the probably um, because just, I was the RA. <laughs> no, it's just the it's just the uncool kids uh, well, are throwing how parties. How dare you? <laughs> no, they're not inviting the cool kids. That's the problem. Oh, I see. It's the uncool kids who throw the party. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice save. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we didn't go to any party. Welcome to Cool Kids Cast. <laughs> cool Kids Cast C three. Okay. Uh, kids start to see. <laughs> <laughs> so should I be staring at the notes for this, or should I just um, listen? No, to you, you don't really have to. Okay, I've, I've we'll looked ask, at them once. Uh, excuse me, we'll ask the questions here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness, <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Right? No, it's fine. <laughs> um, a lot of people either throw the notes up or or not. Um, but right. like, yes, a lot of people do or don't. <laughs> I know. It's cool. fine. I, I think that encompasses everyone, actually, Ryan. <laughs> All the people either do or don't. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. I'm so tired and I'm it's being so mean to you right now. <laughs> it's okay. It's making me laugh. Um, and bringing a little joy into the world and is never I'm a bad I'm really thing. happy to see that me making you laugh is not making you cough this time. It's true. I, I'm done. That's really exciting. I, I ha- I've coughed maybe once today. <laughs> You've um, coughed your last. <clears throat> I've coughed my last cough. <laughs> I can make weird voices without okay. having to to expel cough demons. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, no, fi- five weeks of being yeah, sick uh, as of yesterday. And then uh, I stopped taking cough syrup and then suddenly I'm better. So, you know, whatever conspiracy theory you want to pull out of that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I was trying to think of another C word, conspiracy something cast, but conspiracy coffin cast. Coffin conspiracy cast? Yeah. There you go. Yep. <laughs> C3. C3. Yep. Mm. Okay. Uh, should we record an actual podcast? Like yeah, a let's real do one, that. not one that we made up? I agree. We've got okay. like I mean, five we, of them in the works here. We make this one up also, but. <laughs> We're professionals. <laughs> Professional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Poor Melody's over here like, oh, what did I agree to? You're really good friends. I can tell that. <laughs> Here's the thing. We had never met each other before we made this podcast. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But you do seem to get along really well. We yeah, do. I mean, what, now after like four call... years of this, we're, we're doing OK. But we, mm-hmm. we did not know each other before we decided to do this. Yeah, we just <laughs> jumped in. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And uh, and that that manic uh, planning episode of uh, getting things ready uh, was, was just a fun uh, jumping board to Hooray, uh, mental illness. This this whole experience. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take notes. Outtakes. This is nowhere near where my keyboard is. I'm just That's... wiggling my fingers in the air. <laughs> it looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's, I was like, that doesn't seem like ergonomically <laughs> correct. It really though. looks like you're in a hacker movie at that point. Oh, it does. It does <laughs> indeed. Really? Like, why are you rhythmically waving your fingers over your computer? This is what makes it go. It makes the demons happy. Yeah. And if you I'm think in. about it, you know, where's the camera? Where the screen is? Uh, mm-hmm. That just doesn't make sense. How's the, how's the hacker hacking? 
without a screen. <coughs> Excuse me. So, oh, yeah, my cough is gone. <laughs> 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 <It's on. laughs> so kind. I know. All right, well, you. let's. <laughs> you have to. Uh, Increase the size of my PDF a little bit so I can so I can okay. write on it more efficiently. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. I don't have a fancy pen. I can okay, write on look. a screen. Okay, look. <laughs> I bought it to do a job. <laughs> and I'm gonna use it for my fun stuff. But, Thank you very much. Hey, I'm still doing that job. So. I, mean, I, swear. <laughs> I still have to do that for another year, Ryan. I know. <laughs> and it's an important job that society needs me to do, Ryan. Well, I mean, I would argue the, that that's the case, yeah. For the good of humanity. Mm hmm. A certain the world subset. was begging me to judge them. <laughs> <laughs> they said, please, Amelia, judge us. You need to judge us, please. I mean, technically they did because they did vote for me to be judgmental of the things. They like, did. Mm, um, and that's that fine. Was, it was. You were, and that's and that's perfectly okay. <laughs> by popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> Back by popular demand, Amelia would tell you. It's Amelia. Amelia will tell you how she feels. <laughs> so for this part here, we're just doing the initial character creation, right? And then that other part was it part two or whatever. That's like another episode, essentially. Yeah, that's the okay. uh, that's yeah. the actual discussion stuff. So this will be cool, cool. all part of. Uh, so this will be at the tail end of episode one, and then all of episode two. And then we'll stop the recording and start a new recording for episode three, which is all discussion. Oh, I didn't know there'd be an episode three. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. That's not, is that today or not yeah. today? Oh, okay. It yeah, is. If, it's if you all got included time. in that like, okay. recording. I, I, I must have missed the, 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 the three part, but that's okay. I, I well, looked at it. I mean, I it says part two on the outline. Yeah, see, uh, part, right. two. Okay. part two becomes episode three. It's just like uh, a separate. Yeah, so it's I know it's confusing. Character creation okay. by the time we're done with it takes two episodes. And then the third episode is the discussion. Yeah. So it's, gotcha. it's part two, episode three. I know it's okay. we, we give people a little taste of the character creation in episode one and then right. give them that cliffhanger to come back for for the rest of it. Okay. Stick around to find out if Amelia and Ryan do anything different than what they usually do. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they used to. <laughs> they don't anymore. No. Uh, we used not, to. We used to try. <laughs> not in the Deering times. Yeah. In, in the before times. In the before times. Once before. upon a time, we tried <laughs> to change things up every so often. Uh huh. Uh, not so much. Now. All right. We say it, and then we put the audio cue in there that's like, let's mix it. Like, we should, I don't know why we still have it in there, because literally every episode it's, we say it for ourselves now. It is tradition, so we, tradition. Can know, we know when to cue up the, the soundbite from Marie Claire. Of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she took time out of her day to give us some amazing it's recordings. True. And she did and, a great job. Thank you, Marie Claire. Yeah, and I synthesized it into uh, the amalgamation that it is now. Right, into um, the horror that it is. That... <laughs> that uh, funnily enough, uh, her husband, without any knowledge of this happening previously, the first time he heard it said, is that, is that my wife? <laughs> That's a good husband, though, that knows, even when his even wife's with... voice has been, like, put through a modulator 15 times, still knows that it's her. Yep. That's true love. That's right true there. love. That's yep. true love. Love is uh, modulation. Yep. <laughs> See, that's why I had to get divorced because my ex husband never would have been able yep. to tell. Love knows no and bounds the, of voice modulation. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, so take that, Dan. Yep. <laughs> if you're well, listening, well, which you're well, probably not, because well, you're my ex husband. Welcome to the outtakes, uh, Dan, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> That was the first clicky of 2022. Ooh, the first clicky of 2022. Yeah. Ugh, starting the year and, off strong. And I felt like I really, I was like into it. I was ready. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm really jazzed up uh, for this year. Like uh, yesterday, the first, uh, we, we did some major unpacking and put Ooh. up some pictures on the walls. Uh, this is the first weekend. We have mm -hmm. not been sick 
since yeah. we've moved into the house in some yeah. way, shape, or form. See, I am not feeling it. Like, I'm not feeling 2022 yet. I, for New Year's Day, like, didn't do a whole lot until the evening yeah. uh, when I decided to, well, not decided to, but, like, I had plans to go to my parents' house. And right as we were leaving, it was like, what if Blizzard? Um, and then I got to my parents' house, and the whole point was to watch Encanto together, mm. which the kids and I have watched, like, three times and loved. Uh, and my family was not in Kanto at all. So yeah. uh, that was a bummer. We only and, saw half of it so far. Oh, yeah. I, I loved it, but they they were not into it. Hmm. Um, so that was that sucked. And then um, we drove home in what was still a blizzard, and what should have been like a 22-minute drive took about an hour. Oh, so, gross. So, yeah, my, my 2022 is like not off to a stellar start. So, <laughs> well, you know, it's like it's everybody all... hates the thing that you love, and now yeah. you're embarrassed. You know, like when you show people a movie or yeah. something, and like it's like you're like watching them, you're like, do you love it? Do you love it? And they're like, uh -huh. Ugh. like my sister looks at me and she's like, what is this? And I was like, it's like a Disney, like, and Lynn Manuel Miranda. And like, and she's like, I hate this. I hate everything about this right now. Wow. I know. That's, that seems extreme. I know. Like, if you like Disney with the songs and, and right. the fun so stuff. Right, so she was like, like, she didn't like... Like, the uh, cinematography was gorgeous. Right, that's what I said. I was like, she did oh say gosh. it at the end. She was like, the colors were beautiful. It's so, it's such and a gorgeous film. And I was like, the animation film. is, like, so pretty. And, yeah. like, you know, she didn't like um, Mirabel's outfit because that bothered her. What? Because it has, like, all of the embroidery and stuff on it that, like, is very clear that, like, she did herself. And, you know, and Mary's like, it looks messy. And Mary can't handle messy. Oh. So, like, she can't do it. She's like, no, I don't like this. Um, yeah, and my dad was just now? like, it's okay. Yeah. That was, like, the wow. most enthusiastic response I got was, it's okay. Fuddy duddies. I know. Uh-huh. Oh. oh boy. So yeah, I don't know. I hope that the rest of twenty two or twenty twenty two goes a little better than that. Like I'm really happy that it's it's working yeah. out for you. That you guys, I'm really happy that you guys are feeling better because you've had yeah. a, a really nasty time of it lately. Yeah, I um, mean, we even uh, fought through COVID. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my son had gotten that, and uh, we all tested negative. Even though I'm pretty sure we had it at some point because I had some weird Omicron level symptoms. Yeah. Um. So you know, who knows? But we're right. all better now. Yeah, that's good. We, we that's got good. better. We got better. <laughs> <laughs> a, whatever. Anyway, that's, that's my rant. that's my rant. Now it's all recorded for everyone to hear. <laughs> well, just... we'll see how much of that makes it into the outtakes. Does he not look like 30 years older this year? It's true. I mean, like, I swear that listening to Joe Rogan has aged him significantly. Oh, he looks I so know. much older. I know. I don't get it. Like, what have they done to you? Yeah. Anyway. Just, just one of those things. Okay, welcome to our Aaron Rodgers complaint cast. Uh, apparently they have Dude a game and I coming. decided recently that we were going to, like, stop making Garbage of the Five Rings and we were just going to, like, make... Um, like a random episode every week of us just like talking about a thing that we thought was interesting. We were playing Overwatch and I was like, so my favorite turret character is this one. I was like, this is welcome to turret talk. <laughs> turret talk. <laughs> we'll just do a random episode. And the name um, of the podcast changes every week. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'll just do oh like a God. quick Photoshop art. <laughs> oh my God. I would listen to it. I would, it would be a fun, uh, uh, a fun discussion episode. A fun little side project, right? Uh, two friends talking about stuff. Uh, is always a good genre. In my it's, book. A, it's one of my favorite genres. It's just like friends being friends. Friends being friends. Yeah. That's very true. Okay, I'm going to do a five count and then we'll start. Oh boy. <laughs> after <laughs> just uh, 12, right into 12 minutes after. <laughs> okay, well, now you know time. where the marker is so you can just cut off. <laughs> All right. Where's Amelia? Where's Amelia? She's right here. Hello. Do you want to see her? Come here. Come here. <laughs> can I say hi? Yeah, you can say hi. I'll get you up here. Oh, you're so hi. big already. Hi, hi. how are you? I suppose she can't hear me. Get you. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Did you have a good Christmas? Uh -huh. What did Santa bring you? A stroller and... 
Yeah. Like a stroller. That's pretty exciting. You put your baby in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your baby's name? Guys. <laughs> <laughs> she carts around Pikachu. Oh, yeah. What, who else do you put in there? Cat. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Did you play in the snow? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Did you make a snowman yet? Uh-huh. No. Yeah. No, not yet. <laughs> I didn't either. Pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to say bye-bye? Bye. 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 Okay. Hey, I'll see you later. I don't know what to say. Hi. Okay. Can you say, welcome to Character Creation Cast? Welcome to Character Cast. Very good. Woohoo! Mm. Oh, uh, that's where the stop button is. It's way over I'm... here. All right, so we can go ahead and hit the stop button. Stop and now. Clicky. Clack. Don't look Clicky, back. Clack, 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 click, click, clack. Uh, oh, fantastic. Oh. New mic. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, I tested it out before we started you know before we hopped on this call just to be oh very good make sure that it like did an input yeah you doing know? an input it's very good yeah that's like my favorite thing the microphones i do. know uh just do it do an input <laughs> mm-hmm. i agree yep. um yeah that's the technical term yeah no I, i'm excited to edit it and uh excited for the to to hear the difference in quality uh between this and the the actual episode um so we'll we'll see how it works uh, we just have oh, to. I'm just looking over. I got an email from my boss. I was like, I've confirmed that we need to return our pagers. And I was like, oh, where is my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have one and it hasn't had batteries in it forever. Oh. And like, I got paged one time and it was a mistake, like in the six years oh, boy. <laughs> of doing this. So, oh, God. I'm like, Ugh, I hope I know where it is. Yeah. I've moved like three times since I've used it. You just got to find it. Oh. Yep. Somewhere. People still use pagers. So, for, for some Somehow. People still use pagers. Um, yeah. We got away from Well, we don't. Well, now we're kind of like, we don't. Um, I think because we're in the medical field, we've been using them longer mm. um, because there's no way to accidentally transmit health information with a pager. Uh, you know, it's yeah. like if I send a text and I'm like, hey, I need this thing, while it's easier than like getting a page, calling somebody back, being like, what do you want? Yeah. Um, there is the potential that you could like misuse that. That's I very think. true. Uh, so. You know the whole uh, what HIPAA thing. Yep. Uh, yep. All those rules and and laws and regulations. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. Gotta love it. Yeah. Well, you know, so. there should be a, a a way to get around that with like security and blah blah blah. But uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, we can use our phones for work, but we have to turn them over to work, and they have to, like, put all the security stuff on there, and then they control, like, what apps you can have on there, yep. and, like, you know, it's like you can't use your phone for other regular phone things. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, I, I, so. I, I can't even have my company email on my phone without them having full control of my phone. Right, And right. if my kids happen to try to unlock my phone ten times, the phone mm-hmm. auto erases everything on the phone. Oh, no. So I do not have my company email on my phone. <laughs> right. I know that was kind of like where I settled too. I was like, there is nothing that I need to do that much yeah. that like work like balance. You know, it's like there's like two or three things that I need to do that I can kind of do remotely by doing like, you know, our remote access login. Yeah. And and then there's the rest of it. I'm like, OK, I'll just have to use a work computer yeah. for that because like, no, thank you. That's just it's too much. And I like fully understand why for my job mm-hmm. like i fully understand why like the amount of health information that i have access to and like you know beyond that for the rest of my job like the proprietary information i have access mm-hmm. to um that's fine i don't need to have that i should not have that on my phone the power um but like it does make it a pain <laughs> sometimes it's fine Ugh. it's fine yep but you know what? Honestly, guess you know, healthy work life balance, right? I agree. Like, sorry, I'm not working. I am not on my work devices. I, I hear that all the time uh, at my workplace. And um, it's it's true half of the time uh, from a manager's perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, oh, yeah, healthy work life balance. 
but maybe you could work a bit longer. Uh, right. Maybe you could, uh, you know, work weekends sometimes and like. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm lucky that I'm in a department that's like very much like fine with with that. I think largely because like we are all parents. Yeah. Um, it, we are all women yeah. <laughs> and um, all parents. So it's like, you know, we are the ones doing the majority of the child care while the kids are, you know, home from school. And like we were all the ones doing classes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we're all in that same boat of like, I'm working when I can. That's very true. <laughs> but like sometimes I can't. I know. <laughs> now, before I forget, I'm just going to hit that button. So yeah. now we're recording. Got Doubly. It. <laughs> super recording. super recording uh we got all we right got this. Should we do let's this? do this uh, it looks like i am starting um i do have a uh amelia talks about stuff uh, okay. in the second half um so just speak your heart okay i will um <laughs> we'll say what my heart believes exactly. believe in the heart of the cards amelia the heart of the cards <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right, I will give us a five count, um, and we'll pick up that sweet, sweet new background uh, noise on your mic uh, and, and get started. Hooray. Yay. All right. Yay. Recorded one done. Nailed it. Another one. Woo-woo. In Click the books. Done clicky this time. All oh, right. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew I it was coming just, this time. I was like, one, yep. two. I was just like, go. Oh, no. clicky. Oh, no. Dang it. Ugh. I'm a clicky <laughs> off now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it, it's easy to line up at least. Yeah. At least it's not like several seconds off and you're like, where is this break? And then you're uh, talking and I'm talking, you know, it's like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've also had to deal with uh, a Zoom backup where when when somebody pauses in Zoom, it it pauses the audio, or when somebody <gasps> mutes in Zoom, it pauses the audio recording in Zoom. I didn't so know when that. It, when it picks back up, it just squishes a bunch of seconds together. So like everything after that point, in most cases, uh, off. is off a bit. <sighs> yeah, but you know what? It it doesn't always do that. Oh well, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There's nothing more annoying than consistency. <laughs> Zoom, get it together. Uh, okay. All right, let me get down to the end of this outline. Oh, yeah, I should probably get to the outline. Part two, reiterate introductions. Why do we have that there? Okay, anyway. Uh, because we have to reiterate introductions. I know, but we don't need the heading that says that. We absolutely okay. do. All right. <laughs> Who this wrote is my this? opinion. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? Awesome. Uh, so we can we can stop this one now too. Hooray! And hope there's. We'll hope. So I just press stop. I did it. I hey, might have done it just like a millisecond early because I was excited. Oh, no, that's fine. I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, I don't even know if that can make it into the outtakes. No, probably not. Nope. <laughs> that one's just for us. Yeah, I cleaned up um, 41 or 45.1 and 22. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I, I don't know. Them, but... like, like, it's night and day almost. That's good. That makes me happy because it was it's really sad that those series didn't. Yeah. You know. Now it's our references as... in the cold open of like, sorry, our audio socks are going to be like a little bit, you know. It sucks a little bit. Um, but it's not as bad as you're making it. No, peaches, you cannot rub against this. I do not have a weight on the bottom. <laughs> I I had my be on the wall session yesterday. Mm-hmm. So my bag uh, filled with my be on the wall books and notebooks and stuff is not here. Oh. It is over somewhere else. So it's not holding uh, down your microphone? So it is not holding down my microphone. And then peaches just decides to, hey, let me jump up here in my cat bed which is on my bed right next to the microphone, arguably. Mm-hmm. But let me rub against the microphone and tip it over on you. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Um, I don't know. You know I have what? just I'm like gonna... cords everywhere because I still have this stand not all the way set up because I didn't get to it. And then Eleanor needed stuff printed. So I have like the printer actually yeah. set up under my desk now because um, I don't usually keep it set up for that. And like, 
I keep kicking it, and I'm just, I don't know, I haven't, like, you know, I've got the, the USB hub thing over here now so that everything can be plugged in, but I haven't, like, adjusted the cords. It's, like, just mm. stuff plugged into it so that we can go, yeah. you know? Like, uh, but it's working, though, right? It is, yeah. Oh, I'm so like, happy. Um, Yeah, I just, but, like, I had to, like, move my old microphone because I had that out from streaming yesterday mm-hmm. even though i didn't actually use it because i had to stream all by myself oh boy. <laughs> i had to like run the stream he's like hope you're comfortable doing that because the morning kids are not done yet because we had to move mm-hmm. the match like way earlier yeah so it's at like one of those code ninjas places so mm. like they have like classes and programs in the morning and then in the afternoon they do all the esports stuff okay um but the morning programs weren't over yet. Yeah. So usually the owner is the one that I do the stream with. And he was like, yeah, I still have kids here doing like the morning code ninjas program stuff. So you're in charge. And I was like, cool. Normally I just talk. I don't know what <laughs> buttons do anything. Like, like uh-huh. I know how to like turn the stream on and off, but like, I don't know how to like run the camera in the game. Oh yeah. Cause you have like an external, you know? So it's like, you have to like switch between characters and the objective. And you know, I'm like, so it probably is like the most seasick thing if you watch it because like you'll switch to like one player or something and then they'll die and it's like okay you gotta switch to somebody else and it's like okay we're gonna follow this character now and you know like i'm sure it's just like the most rambly mess ever Oh, probably because you're just talking to yourself for an hour yeah um you know giving your hot takes on children's video game (laughs) i mean that's that's where we have to just go into the golf uh announcer voice yeah and here we have uh, Kill X thirty two right. uh, pulling out the shotgun. But the and... other part too is that like they don't have their they have like the names up on the screen of like what computer they're using. It's not their actual gamer tags. So like oh. I don't remember who sits in what spot other than right. Nate. So like I'm like okay, I know that XPL three uh-huh. is Badgerfish seven, but I don't know. Like the other kids, like which one is silver? Which one is like Soldier Seventy Eight? Which one is like I don't right? You know, they so need uh, just, like, they need numbers on their backs and well, like, they do, but I don't names. sit in the room with them. I they know. have all that, so that there. makes sense. You don't want to distract them, right? Right. Yeah. They don't want my like running commentary on what they should or shouldn't be doing. Exactly. You know? So I'm in a different <laughs> room. I can see them like on like the security camera because <laughs> yeah. I'm in like the back, like coffee break room oh there you go <laughs> it's not good acoustics it's not it's just like me and a laptop yeah, but, that happens. um yeah it was a little like i sat down and he's like hope you're ready to do it by yourself and i was like hope you're glad i'm here like yep. volunteer <laughs> parents i know but it was funny because like i got there and like all of a sudden i hear ian go she's here and he's like okay good <laughs> like <laughs> great <laughs> Oh, Saved your ass again. <laughs> yeah. Take that, uh, somebody. Yeah, you, esports <laughs> people. Esports people that don't even take into account our Sims 4 idea. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, XP League. <laughs> XP League. XP stands for K- K- Sims. No, I'm pretty uh, sure it just stands for experience points like it does anywhere else, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, four with the Nate pH. made me buy Sims Four though entirely so that we could figure out this esports thing. I mean, you might as well. I haven't played it yet, but well, you just need one person to play it. Yeah, and three people shouting behind. Right, Nate played it, and I stood behind him. Um, it is. Him That's a good approximation. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, I fixed my microphone weight issue. I okay. had a copy of Phoenix Dawn Command behind me. I saw you pull that off the shelf, and that's a that's a beastie. That is a beastie heavyweight uh, book. Yeah. Slash box set full of cards as well. Yeah, that is that is heavyweight round RPG. Yeah, that's not going to tip over anymore. No. I'm gonna have to pick it up because I feel bad about it being on the floor partially. Yeah. But you know, whatever. Desperate <laughs> times. Well, shall we do a cold open? Yeah, we shall. We shall. I forgot my water, so let's hope I don't get anything caught in my throat. Yeah, I'm like a little like cotton mouth. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Oh, when you boy. sleep all day? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a lazy day here, too. Um, I've been just prepping for a for fun campaign with uh, Victoria and a bunch of others. So it's like eight players. Dang. Yeah, it's it's wild, but it's it's like um, I don't understand uh, this for fun thing. I know, right? We took ten or eleven months to play out two days 
uh, in the game that we're playing for Beyond the Wall. Um, and we finally finished yesterday. <laughs> so, so we finally finished the one adventure that we were on for 10 or 11 months. Yeah. I feel and like it's different between like in game time taking forever and then just like, you know, it's like it's one thing too if it's like a group that like, oh, we're only supposed to meet every month or every two months or something yeah. like that. Whereas like this is supposed to be a weekly group that we haven't yeah. met since Thanksgiving. Yeah. To be fair, the second day lasted probably 36 hours. Yeah. Uh, because our characters stayed up all night trudging through a forest, cutting <laughs> up some alien pods that sprouted from a, a, a meteorite seed. Mm, as you do. That, were, that was stealing souls from the village. Oh. Like yeah. you do. Like you like do. You do. Yeah, that's that. It's a trope for a reason. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. And then our characters were exhausted. We saved the lives of everybody we didn't kill. And uh, and, you know, it's good. We saved the lives of everyone we didn't kill. Hey, there was two people in a fight with us that we purposely knocked out because they were the cousins of one of our uh, player characters. <laughs> Oh, okay. uh, and the others, we were just like, well, you probably knew them, but, you know, they're slamming spells at us and we're just going to kill them. There's only so much you can do. You know? And plus, they're at probably, point, pretty, they're probably pretty, pretty, pretty dead right now, right? So yeah. no coming back from that. Right, right. Of course, then the people, the, the cousins, they were already dead, pretty dead, mm -hmm. but they came back. Mm -hmm. But could you undead them? We did undead. Well, we we re re undeaded. You relived them. them? Re relived them. Yeah, we relived them. And someday we're gonna have to go over <laughs> the very intricate differences between undeaded and relived. That's true. I, I forgot I was talking to an expert here. So yeah. Should we record a cold open? <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Oh no. Okay. Well, hold on. One second. <laughs> hey Google. Turn off my furnace. There we go. So now we just got to wait a moment for these massive background bumpies to stop. Mm. It that. really trails off. Like, as soon as I'm done talking, it goes... <sighs> just clamps like a, down. Like a spaceship landing? Like, <sighs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I was going to try and make a spaceship landing sound, and then for some reason it just, like, wasn't working, so I just gave up halfway through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I was just I was just looking at my waveforms like, okay, I, I should be ready. How are my, wave, wave, my waveforms looking? And then I'm like, wait a minute. There's a big thick line in the middle there. Mm -hmm. And not, then I hear the static in my ears every time I talk. Is it like thick with two Cs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a U somewhere in there. Mm, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. I'm going to do a five count and then we'll go. Oh boy! All right. Or are you? Are you? Or, done I'm bumping? still waiting for the furnace oh, okay. to turn off. Oh, okay. It said sure, turning hallway thermostat off, but I don't believe it yet. While we're waiting, uh, the Encanto soundtrack is on repeat in my brain. <laughs> are you gonna um, sing it for? Are you gonna perform it for us? Uh, let's see. Nate said that, like, one of his classmates has been playing um, We Don't Talk About Bruno, like, yeah. on repeat constantly to the point oh, where gosh. he's, like, tired of it because as soon as he hears it, he also hears the rest of his class yelling at this kid to turn it off. Oh. Um, which, yeah. like, that sucks. Turn it off. No, not again. We don't that. talk about Bruno, no, no. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and sing on um, microphone while it's recorded that you could potentially release to the world. Uh, I'm not giving you that kind of power. No, please don't. Um, that's fine because we're we're done with the furnace. Okay. All right. So yeah. now I will do a five count. Now you can do a true, a true five count. The bumpies are gone. Okay. Future. Future. For now, uh, before we let you get to the out teeth. To the outtakes. How that and was an outtake right there. I know, right? <laughs> now you have to leave it in because I went to it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Uh, we did it. Woo. I'm going to find my stop button. I think it's right over here.